Hutsifar means cliff pointing to the sky, and the name certainly describes this place. It was quite dark when we came there at 6 o'clock in the morning. It's best to have a torch light with you while on the way up. I had brought a headlamp and we also used a torch on my mobile phone to get us safely up through the woods and up to the peak. From the base camp up to the top there's a trail of around 800 meter or 20 minutes walk. The hike is a moderate one as it's a steep climb and the path is not even. My girlfriend was pretty exhausted when we reached the top. The sunrise was what we came for and although there were clouds all over, it certainly didn't disappoint. The sea of clouds that blanket the valleys on the Laos side of the mountain underneath the peak was a stunning view, especially when they floated over the hills and down into the valley. But we missed the sunrise due to the cloudy weather. In a way, we had a beautiful 360 degree view and could see over mountains, hills and valleys in both Laos and Thailand. The temperature did not drop too much, but be sure to wear warm clothes anyway if you come here at sunrise. You'll never know what kind of weather suddenly turns up when you get there. On the top there were crowds of people, most of them Thais but also some foreigners. What impressed me was a more than 80 year old Thai lady who made it to the top. I admire her success getting to the peak. There will be monk kids along the way dancing or singing, <laughs> seeking for a tip. If you're kind enough to give them some money, do so. Otherwise, just ignore them.
We stayed one night at Blue Gold Hostel, Hotel Guesthouse, Puchifar Village. This place was incredibly beautiful, surrounded by blooming trees and a breathtaking view over the nearby valley and surrounding hills. The couple who owned the place was very kind to us and the host drove us up to the base camp with his pickup at 6 o'clock in the morning. When coming back to the guest house, we noticed that the local farmers burn their sugarcane fields down in the valley. They do so all over Southeast Asia in February, and I was told that they do so because it's easier to cut the sugar canes when they harvest them manually, after they have burned them. But as a result, the air pollution in Southeast Asia in February is tremendous. Mm -hmm. 